In November 1848, despite very poor health, Chopin played at a grand Polish ball at London's Guild Hall. He played at the concert on the way back from um, Scotland. Uh, he was very ill. He'd caught a chill on the way back to London. Um, and he was effectively providing music from an anteroom. Uh, he played for about an hour um, his usual short, characteristic pieces. Um, and nobody really paid him any attention. And certainly we don't get comment in the press. Um, you'd have thought that uh, such an event would have been a great platform for him, that he would have been uh, a, a great uh, centrepiece, uh, his performance would have been a great centrepiece um, at this event, but unfortunately it almost passed without notice, and he left, returned to Paris, and that was his last public performance. Although this last performance may have been a dismal event, Chopin's final years as a composer produced some of his most powerful work, some of the great masterpieces of the piano repertoire, including a work about which James is passionate, the fourth ballade. There are plenty of wonderful moments here. Looking at the ballade with his Italian teacher, Eduardo Strabioli, James is exploring how to bring out the bel canto singing line within the piece. But I, I felt that you cut a couple of times this long line. Yeah. Uh, we, we sh I don't think we need. I mean, because of the, the bel canto has, has to be easy to follow. And uh, somehow this, of course, I, I know that it's important to notice, but not to stop the line. The upper line has to. The whole concept of the piece is really taking a line from a song and turning it into this you know, maelstrom of variations and notes. Careful not to make accent on the short notes, because I can feel a pa dam pa pam pa pam pa pa This happens because we have not the voice. The theme has a hugely song-like quality. Even though it's the simplest of themes, it's one of the deepest pieces. I, I don't think he ever exposes himself more than in that piece. Emmanuel Axe is one of the world's greatest Chopin interpreters, and James met up with him while he was rehearsing at the Barbican Hall in London. To slow down here. He asked him how important he thinks the singing line is throughout the Chopin repertoire. If you play anything of Chopin very slowly, it still sounds good. You know, all the fast etudes that are meant to be pay, uh, played at, a, at an absurd rate of speed especially if you follow his metronome markings, which are, I, I think, impossible so for any human being. <laughs> uh, but in fact, if you're just practicing, if you just play slowly, it sounds so good. You know, it sounds like a beautiful singing line uh, at a slow tempo. So, so I think he was always thinking that way. Uh, and in the fourth ballad yeah. too, of course. In that piece in particular, what, what I've always felt is that he he seems to somehow find a way of going from absolutely the most simple mm -hmm. and kind of not outward music mm -hmm. to something that is completely passionate and then actually goes haywire. Sure. You know, so you start with just that, and then the next time you add a little bit, Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop. And the next time you add a little bit of that, and then the next time you start going a little bit mad, uh, everything actually not in units of four or eight or three, but always seven or ten or something crazy, you know? Uh, and then eventually comes the coda, which is literally berserk. Yeah, especially so, after so, the 
calm. So I think in, in this piece, it really goes from that to, and the more you can find a way of doing that, uh, I think the, the, the grander the performance becomes. So it's, it's difficult at the beginning, especially, to find a way of playing really, really beautifully and really simply. Mm. Uh, I don't know, I haven't found it yet, but that's what I'm looking for. The main thing we can be sure of in Chopin's personal life is that we don't know the whole story. But in his music, although we don't get answers, we do get a sense of the sheer depth of his emotional experience. And it's this that's so relentlessly attractive to artists like James. <laughs> 